there is a thing that I was reading this morning, and I, I'll not dive super deep into it. Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, again, is, of yeah. course, oil's going to run out. Right. It, it, there was an article this morning, and most probably CNN that I was reading this morning, the oil is definitely going to run out. And they're, f they're, they're trying to focus on uh, tourism, right. relig religious tourism as well. Yeah. You know, and I don't need to explain more uh, when it comes to religious tourism with Saudi Arabia. And I, I was wondering, there are a couple of sectors that we have, which uh, is always going to be with us, at least for the foreseeable future. Mount Everest ain't going anywhere. It's going to be there forever. And of course, there are tons of other things that uh, when it comes to tourism, that's always going to be there with us forever and ever. And what you just pointed out was we're not going to run out of water anytime soon. Uh, we have 6,000 rivers, right, uh, X, uh, last time we had this conversation, so we're not going to run out of that either. Potential, uh, let's talk about, uh, not just hypothetically, but let's pinpoint on, and I would want to understand from each and every one of you, kun kun sector mein say, hami le say, hami le say, guarantee say, hami le, to prosper garni sectors are say, kun kun hota, if you could just pin, pinpoint a few sectors that, Guarantee we're gonna prosper, no shadow of a doubt. Money is hydro, energy, right? Energy. Uh, energy in hydro, you have two. Uh, sorry, in energy, I think the two most obvious one is energy because, as you pointed out, we have thousands of rivers here, and Nepal has the uh, huge advantage. It's not that other countries don't have rivers, there are rivers all around the world, but Nepal has an advantage of uh, you know, our geography and landscape. We go from the high Himalayas all the way down to the uh, plains, plains of uh, right, so it gives that kind of natural. Uh, uh, drop, uh, which is uh, basically energy, right? Free energy, because of our pure geography and landscape, right? So uh, the same hydropower plant being built in Nepal versus, say, in France, it's probably a much more costlier to build it there, yeah. right? So uh, even from an investor standpoint, right, uh, it makes much more sense to invest here because it's less costly to build an uh, energy plant. Secondly, if you speak about solar, for example, right, one of the things that we all love about living in Nepal is, uh, besides the people, is of course, the weather. Right. Uh, there are wonderful other cities and countries, but there are and certain, most. let's not name, very famous cities in the world where it's like raining half the year yeah, and, you yeah. know, you can't walk out with your umbrella and so on, right? Nepal has 300 plus sunny days in a year on average. So talk about solar energy right there, right? So there's hydro, there's solar, and there's a lot more, right? We can go on and on. Secondly, uh, talking about uh, what are high potential areas. Um, so if you combine two things, one is our youth dividend that Manish uh -huh. was talking about. We have a very young population, very smart. There's a lot right. of smart Nepalese people. Like, mm. Let's not underestimate that. Although many go out, there are still uh, there's enough smart people still in <laughs> Nepal. Right? There, trust me. Well said. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? uh, and then secondly, but you can't just say they're smart and they're here, right? So the thing about youth today, um, so. Uh, I almost feel a little old saying this. I'm not. I'm not that old, but but speaking to say uh, younger people, maybe in their 20s or early 30s, is is um, so a lot of these uh, young people who are in their 20s, I think, grew up in the dot com internet era, right? Mm. Uh, so for them, yeah. YouTube, internet, it's just like this is just part of their lives. You, you right? It's it's very they're intricately linked to this technology era. So the advantage of that is they're smart, their access to information, everything is out of this world, right? Than say the previous generation, right? The disadvantage of that is that attention span, mm -hmm. right? Very short. We all being, some of us being parents, we worry about this. I, I, I studied psychology. One of the worries of psychologists is that we'll have a er, uh, generation of young people who literally have ADD, attention deficit disorder. Right, because think about it, when, when you have technology, you literally have access to everything. You're yeah. clicking through so fast that, that you are literally being wired, like your brain, to process information too fast that you can't kind of in a step back, slow, reflective kind of way go in that pace, mm -hmm. which that also has value, mm -hmm. right? So I think there's that kind of double-edged sword. So I think our youth need to, uh, uh, the youth dividend is there. Uh, the smart, young population is here mm -hmm. in Nepal. But I think they need to be provided like the right platform, and I think Nepal can be a great, for example, uh, technology hub. Right. I was how, about to how, say how, that. how can they become a technology hub? I'll give you an example. Sure. Right. So even India has a youth dividend. Right. India has a very young population, there. so we cannot like directly compete in that sense, right? Because all the multinationals have offices there, and so on and so forth. But one way is, for example, I was speaking recently, a few months ago, with my former colleague and friend who's based in Singapore. He works for a big. Uh, 
Singapore investment company called Temasek, mm -hmm. uh, right? So it's a huge company. He heads one of the technology uh, business uh, arms there. And he was saying, like, you know, you, you, you keep Tenzin talking about energy and hydro, blah, blah, all that stuff. And he's like, you know, the next big thing, uh, next big thing is not oil, you know, it's data, right, data. in the future, mm -hmm. right? Mm. So, so uh, uh, oil and everything is a limited resource, yeah. right? Water, like, as you pointed out, is pretty much unlimited. Chovis Gantra, for free, right? It's our natural, uh, God-gifted uh, resource, right? Yeah. So if we were to have these big companies, Google and Microsoft and Amazon and whatnot, for them to build their uh, data centers here in Nepal, and their data center energy fully coming from uh, green energy, be it solar or hydro and so on like that, that would then start attracting uh, these kind of companies. And then they'd also need talent, yeah. then, right? And and then what we, we have, like, plenty of smart young um, Nepalese people ready to to work for MNCs. Just like India didn't really develop until they actually opened up their economy into, uh, before it was a pretty close economy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Until the 70s, 90s, right? yeah, 70s, 80s. Yeah. And then once the MNCs came in, so they brought in their investments and management practices. Mm. India always had young, smart people, just like Nepal does, right? Uh, and so we have a lot of advantages, you know, I, I think, but certain platform needs to be provided for young people just to say they're young and they're smart is obviously not quite enough yeah so every year we do have young people going abroad looking the grass is greener on the <laughs> other yeah. side yeah. you know so so i i think there are many sectors you know Nep uh, just have to connect the dots if you love what we are doing make sure that you subscribe and turn on notification thank you very much for watching us on youtube make sure that you also listen to us on spotify this program is brought to you by Via Studios.